of the hundreds of times in the Bible where the name of Jacob is given. There are five passages of Scripture in which his name is spelled with an extra vav. Notice this chart right next to me. Jacob is spelled normally with yot, ayin, kof, bet. But there are four scriptures. The first one we talked about on our last program, Leviticus 26:42, in which an extra vav is added to the name of Jacob. And we pose the question, did Moses misspell his name? Did some ancient scribe make a mistake? Or did God put that extra vav in his name as a prophetic view of when this prophecy would be fulfilled? Jeremiah adds four more verses with the name of Jacob spelled in this manner for a total of five. Gary Stearman is here to discuss with me God's covenant with Jacob and his <coughs> mysterious vav. Jacob spelled with a vav. The vav is the hook, uh, J.R., as we have pointed out before. In fact, the word vav in Hebrew means hook, and a hook connects one thing to another. Vav is the letter of conjunction. In fact, uh, when you attach it to the front of a word, it's the word and. Uh, the vav prefix is the same as and. And uh, the vav is thought to be uh, a kind of, the, uh, contain the idea of transforming one thing into another or bringing, bringing something to completion. Mm -hmm. Rabbi Michael Monk, uh, from the Wisdom of the Hebrew Alphabet, says this. This is a very interesting quote. The physical world was completed in six days, uh, and a complete self-contained object <clears throat> contains six dimensions. Vav being the number six. Above, below, left, right, before, behind. Uh, the Jewish nation, too, is complete, self-contained, unique. That is why the number six is so prominent in the story of its growth to nationhood. So he's saying that uh, from a Jewish point of view, Vav actually represents the nation Israel as well. And that quote from Rabbi Monk's book is in our book entitled the mystery of the menorah. What page is that on there? As a matter of fact, if you want to check it out for yourself, this would be on page 185, the mystery of the menorah in the Hebrew alphabet. But what, what I find fascinating about this is that this letter, so prominently featured uh, in, in the, the name of Jacob, mm -hmm. is not an accident. It's there symbolically to remind us of something. Yes. And on our last program, we suggested that this represents the Messiah who comes to Jacob. Mm -hmm. The Messiah is coming. And uh, for example, in Leviticus 26, 42, the scripture says, Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob. This is the ultimate fulfillment of the covenant that he has with Jacob. That's a prophecy of Jacob returning to the land in the last days. Jeremiah gave a commentary on Leviticus chapter 26 when he referred to the Babylonian captivity which would last for 70 years. Leviticus 26 talks about the sabbatical cycles and 70 of these sabbatical years were violated by the Jewish people when instead of letting the land lay out and lay fallow for a year every seventh year, they planted their crops instead. Eventually, God had enough of it, and he sent them into Babylonian captivity for 70 years so that the land might enjoy its Sabbaths. Jeremiah, the one who comments on Leviticus 26 and explains the Babylonian captivity, used this vav in the name of Jacob four more times. And each time, it refers to the ultimate return of the Jewish people to their homeland the coming of the Messiah, the ultimate conclusion of the covenant God made with Jacob. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And we find uh, Jacob spelled with the, the complete Vav spelling, the additional Vav spelling, mm -hmm. uh, four times in Jeremiah yes. at key positions. Uh, again, the, they remind us uh, of the fulfillment of the covenant. Now these, uh, there are many times that Jeremiah uses the name Jacob that's spelled normally. Mm -hmm. But these four times he adds the vav. Jeremiah 30 verse 18 where he says, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents. Obviously that refers to the end time mm -hmm. and the return of the Jews. We have seen this fulfilled since 1948. In uh, chapter 33 of Jeremiah verses 25 and 26 he says, If my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob. In other words, I will never cast away 
the seed of Jacob. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the, the, the uh, context here is the new covenant, yes. which is yet future, uh, because God is one day going to uh, uh, forge a new covenant with, with uh, Israel based basically on the old Abrahamic covenant, covenant of grace. Right. Uh, you know, that's what's so fascinating here because Leviticus 26.42 says, I will remember my covenant with Jacob. Well, which covenant is that? It is not the Mosaic covenant. Jacob lived long, many years before Moses mm -hmm. came along. That's right. He also said, uh, and oh, by the way, it's my covenant with Isaac, and oh, yes, by the way, it's my covenant with Abraham. This is the same covenant. It's a covenant of grace that God promises to remember. And it's when the Messiah comes to Jacob. Listen to now uh, Jeremiah chapter 46, verse 27. Jeremiah writes, Behold, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return. You see, that's 1948, <clears throat> years following. Yes, it is. And then finally, in chapter 51, verse 19, he says, The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. Here again, he uses the name Jacob with that extra vav in it. So the Messiah has come, established Jerusalem as the capital of his, of his world kingdom, and he said Israel is the rod, that is the scepter, the ruling um, instrument of his inheritance. So, so we've encompassed now uh, Jeremiah <clears throat> chapters 30 through 51. And these chapters deal with latter-day Israel, the regathering, and uh, by the way, uh, just an, uh, an, an isolated sidelight here in uh, Jeremiah 46, 28, uh, the Lord promises Jacob, his servant, he says, I will make a full end of all the nations to whither I have driven thee. In other words, we know exactly what time it is mm -hmm. because Israel is going to be used to defeat the nations which have conspired all these centuries against God. Yes. Now this article that we're talking about here, I mean this, this concept uh, that we're doing on our last program, on this program, I've written up in uh, an article that uh, will appear in our December issue of Prophecy in the News. And um, I am quoting from a, an ancient 13th century rabbinical commentary on this extra vav that is used mm -hmm. here in Leviticus 26, <coughs> 42, and then Jeremiah also repeating this four more times. It's kind of interesting that he referred to certain dates when this vav would be fulfilled, and he talked about 1840, that is the year 5600, being the beginning of it all, but then he continues in this 13th century uh, commentary, a rabbi named Simeon has the following to say, Quote, when the 60th year shall have passed over the threshold of the sixth millennium, the God of heaven will visit the daughter of Jacob with a preliminary remembrance. Another six and a half years will then elapse, and there will be a full remembrance of her. Mm. Gary, this is profound. Yeah. You, please understand, we cannot take this too seriously mm. because it is just the, the uh, commentary of some ancient rabbis. But it is profound in that it follows the book of the Revelation beautifully. And it reveals their thinking. That yes. is, it reveals their basic uh, philosophy mm -hmm. or <clears throat> I can't say theology so much as eschatology. When, they <clears throat> when they're thinking of the Messianic era, they're attaching dates. They're, you mm -hmm. might call them date setters. And, yeah. and in fact, we come up with a date here. 60th year passes over the threshold of the sixth millennium. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the year <clears throat> 2000, and the Jewish calendar year 5760 is the same as the year 2000. So right. we got the 60 <clears throat> and the 576060 mm -hmm. coincides with the year 2000, the threshold of the next millennium. Yeah, and the sixth then millennium <clears throat> is ended. The seventh millennium <clears throat> is beginning. He crosses the threshold of the sixth millennium into the great Sabbath rest. And this is the time, he says, God will visit the daughter of Jacob, that is the offspring, mm -hmm. with a preliminary remembrance in six and a half years later. Says, yeah. that, that sounds like the seven years of the tribulation. Yeah, another six and a half years will then elapse and there will be a full remembrance, he says. Mm -hmm. Well, this is very much, as you say, like Revelation. Yes. It really is. This remembrance here, we don't know exactly what it's referring to, but I think it's probably <clears throat> the remembrance of the covenant that God said, I will remember the covenant mm -hmm. with Jacob. 
You know, Jr. You, you and I have both speculated uh, down through the uh, the last two millennia. The Book of Revelation has been available for anyone to read. Yes, anyone can pick it up and read a copy. And looking at some of the uh, Jewish commentaries from the Middle Ages, it appears that they may have peaked, if you know <laughs> what I mean. Peaked a P -E -E little bit. P-E-E-K-E-D. P-E-E-K-E-D. <laughs> appeared into perhaps some of the New Testament uh, eschatology and said, you know, this doesn't look so bad. Maybe, maybe we could use this. Yeah, you got to admit, <laughs> these rabbis are premillennial. They are. <laughs> and they, dispensational as well. <laughs> yes, they are. <clears throat> and so he says that there's going to be a preliminary remembrance in the year 2000. What does he mean? We'll talk about that when we return in just a moment. Rabbi Simeon in his 13th century commentary says that when the sixth millennium becomes the seventh millennium, crossing the threshold, that'd be the year 2000. God will have a preliminary remembrance and six and a half years later, uh, God will bring about a complete remembrance. One thing we do know about these remembrances is that one is preliminary, the other is complete six and a half years mm -hmm. or in the seventh year later. This sounds like a sabbatical cycle here. It does indeed. The next uh, statement that he makes is, listen to this, this 13th century commentary, then all the nations shall combine together against the daughter of Jacob in order to drive her from the world. Sounds like attempted genocide. It is of that time that it is written, and he quotes Jeremiah 30 verse 7, it is a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Fascinating to me oh. that this rabbi talks about um, the prophecies of the Bible, the end time, the tribulation period, Jacob's trouble, and he relates them to the year 2000, or the first seven years after right. the year 2000. <clears throat> this reminds me of uh, the, the final of the Vav verses we, we read a minute ago, which was uh, Jeremiah 51, 19, the portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. Mm -hmm. And you know, the very next verse, J.R. says, Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee I will break in pieces the nations. Mm -hmm. And so it, God promises through Jeremiah's prophecy to use Israel as a tool. It's Armageddon. Isn't it? it really is Armageddon, and this is exactly what Rabbi Simeon is talking about here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow. Again, remember, we cannot lean too heavily upon these ancient rabbinical speculations because they are date setters. <laughs> They set a date here. Yeah, but you know what's interesting, Jr. is that they are really not saying anything that we haven't already gleaned from the New Testament. Uh -huh. It's fascinating. We bring with, them with to the exception you. of the year 2000, yeah. 57, right. 60, crossing the threshold of the millennium. And of course, uh, in our own way, we have thought that that might be a very interesting year, based on uh -huh. other calculations. Yes, we have considered those possibilities. Yeah. Again, the commentary continues. The kings of the world will assemble in the great city of Rome. And the Holy One will shower on them fire and hail and meteoric stones until they are all destroyed with the exception of those who will not yet have arrived there. He, he pinpoints Rome, doesn't he? He does. And it's you know, incredible. there's a, an ages long belief among uh, the, uh, the teachers of Israel that Rome mm -hmm. is the final world power. Well, of course, Daniel's uh, prophecy, yeah. Daniel chapter 7, talks about the fourth beast coming out of Rome. And, no doubt now the rabbis are very familiar with that prophecy. Daniel referred to it as the revived Roman Empire, mm -hmm. or in so many words, didn't come right out and say it. But in the book of Revelation, we know that Mystery Babylon uh, will be a world system, and every major leader of Protestant Christianity for the past 400 years since the Reformation had believed that Rome would be Mystery Babylon. Absolutely. And the rabbis seem to concur here. He goes on to say, these will commence anew to make other wars, that is, those who survive this mm -hmm. catastrophe in Rome. From that time, the Messiah will begin to declare himself, and round him will be gathered many nations and many hosts from the uttermost ends of the earth. Gary, that sounds like Gentile Christianity there. It really and truly does. And uh, as a matter of fact, during, even during the tribulation, there are going to be great revivals among the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And can you imagine a Jewish rabbi here saying that the Messiah will gather the Gentile nations around him? Mm. That's incredible. It is. 
And then he goes on to say, And all the children of Israel will assemble in their various places until the completion of the century. That would be the year 2000. Mm -hmm. The Vav will then join the He, that is the Messiah, will then join with the Holy Spirit. And, quote, they shall bring all your brethren out of all <coughs> nations for an offering unto the Lord, Isaiah 66, 20. Mm. That's the final immigration of all Jews mm -hmm. throughout the world to Israel. Could and that again, happen in the year 2000? Well, it could. You know, it, the Vav, being the sixth letter of the, human al uh, of the Hebrew alphabet, represents the human being uh, created on the sixth day. The mm. He, the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, uh, five, the, we, we Gentiles think of five as grace. Hey, the number five, is also the symbol of the Holy Spirit. And what he's saying here is that the Spirit of God will come and join with humanity, which mm -hmm. is very much the idea that Gentile Christians have held for 2,000 years. Is that the latter rain, Gary? The latter rain, you know. It's <laughs> when the Holy Spirit is poured out again. Absolutely. <laughs> wow. Now, you know that this, uh, this sixth millennium actually <coughs> has the hay at the beginning mm -hmm. of the uh, letters. Um, but when, when we cross the year 2000, even though in the Jewish calendar it's 5760, it's not 5999, right. we still enter upon the Vav millennium. Isn't that amazing? Fascinating. Then he goes on to say, the children of Ishmael will at the same time rouse all the peoples of the world to come up to war against Jerusalem. So Armageddon here is instigated by the Arabs. You know, this was written six centuries ago. Yes. This was put into print six centuries ago, and it says the children of Ishmael will at the same time mm -hmm. <laughs> are we having, or can we see that now? We see it right now. The children of Ishmael <laughs> are in the headlines every day. Uh, as, we, as we make this program, the children of Ishmael are forbidding inspection of yeah. their chemical and biological warfare resources. That's right. And, uh, and on and on it goes. And he continues with this. He says, the children of Israel at the same time rouse all the people to the world as it is written. And he quotes Zechariah 14, 2, For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Also, Psalm 2, 2, The kings of the earth shall stand up, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. And finally, he says, He that sitteth in the heaven laugheth, and the Lord shall have them in derision. These are the scriptures he chooses mm -hmm. to emphasize that the children of Israel with that, at the same time rouse all the people of the world to come up to war against Jerusalem. You know, as we have studied the end time view from the rabbinic uh, point of view, uh, J.R. and I ha are continually amazed at how close they are. Mm -hmm. They only missed one thing, and that was the name of the Messiah. Just one yes. tiny little yes. detail. <laughs> right. And we happen to know that name. And, he, and then they say, and let's listen to this 13th century rabbinical commentary. Then the lesser vav will rouse itself to unite with the hay. They got a lesser vav. Evidently, mm -hmm. the greater vav is the Messiah. The lesser vav would be the Holy Spirit, or, or excuse me, the uh, Jewish people. Right. And uh, unite with the hay. That would be of the Holy Spirit, and renew the souls that had become old, so as to rejuvenate the world, as it is written, "May the glory of the Lord endure forever. Let the Lord rejoice in His works." Psalm 104:31. Isn't it interesting? He uses Psalm 104 here. Yes, it is. <clears throat> From our point of view, mm -hmm. uh, it's a prophetic psalm that would be placed in time, right in the middle of all these events. Yeah. And then he goes on to say, the first part of this verse signifies that God's glory will attach itself to the world in the latter half, that he will cause the souls to descend into the world and make them into new beings so as to join the world into one. That's the resurrection. Mm -hmm. And then finally he says, happy are those who will be left alive at the end of the sixth millennium to enter on the Sabbath. That is, the seventh millennium will be the Sabbath. For that is the day set apart by the Holy One on which to effect the union of souls and to call new souls to join those that are still on earth as it is written. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even every one that is written into life in Jerusalem, Isaiah 4, 3. Hmm. This is the resurrection and the establishment of the kingdom, the great Sabbath rest. And to all of those <clears throat> who believe that Israel has been 
permanently set aside, I would say, look again at the Word. Mm -hmm. For time and time again, it, it, uh, it speaks of that day in which Israel will be regathered, as in resurrected, yes. stood up, and uh, made to, to uh, literally rule over the whole world. Mm -hmm. So where did this rabbi get the notion that all of this would begin after the year 2000 and say the first seven years of the next millennium? Even though it will not be the next millennium in his calendar, it will be in the Roman calendar. Well, I think he derives it from a rabbinical study of this mysterious Vav in the name of Jacob. And so we've got this really neat, neat study.